Good morning. Good morning. And welcome to Olivet Twin Calvary United Church of Christ. Where no matter who you are or where you are on life's journey, you're welcome here. As you can tell, because I'm a little taller, I'm not Pastor Leslie. <laughs> Pastor Leslie is still on vacation, and so I would please advise you to follow the instructions uh, in the beginning of the announcements there as to how to get in contact should there be a pastoral emergency during this time. I'm David Stakely. For those of you that don't recognize me behind the mask, it's nice to be back with you again. Next Sunday, we begin our normal schedule. I put normal in quotes there. Uh, and so, Kim is going to say a few words about what that means, okay? All right, so starting with September 5th, we're going to try to put everything in the church back to what we're going to call the new normal. So obviously things are different than it used to be, but this book we're going to try and go back to be as normal as we can and as we were before COVID caused us to change our procedures. So at that time, masks will become optional. They're recommended, but masks will become optional and we will rely on you all to social distancing if you so choose. In this church, if we had trouble social distancing, I'd be a very happy person. But I think we have plenty of room in this church if you wish to do I want to thank Reverend Stigley for taking the uh, service today. As he said, Leslie will be back uh, officially on Tuesday. Uh, the last announcement that I did want to let everybody know about, and this is an important one, uh, Mrs. Cipollini passed away this week. She's a long-time member of the church. She uh, put, uh, was part of the original Spike Fellows. Uh, services for Mrs. Cipollini will be on Thursday. I can't give you the details because I don't have the exact details. It's been a little bit of a scramble with Leslie out of the office to get things arranged. Uh, Opie Funeral Home is handling the arrangements, and I'm sure the date and time will be posted this week so that you can get the uh, official information. Thank you very much. Yeah, I'm sure that Opie Funeral Home will have that information on their website, so if you need that information ahead of time, that's where I would go. I know one of the things getting back to normal is quiet. Yeah. And so yes. Tony has a couple things to, that he wanted to announce. Yes, choir officially begins on the 8th of uh, September. On the calendar it has it as the first, but it's the 8th in the choir room. Masks are highly recommended. And also we're beginning to have lay people read the lessons again. So I have a sign-up sheet out in the, the narthex next to the guest signing book. And again, if you have questions about any of these things, if you have, if you look at your newsletter, the information and explanation of exactly the transition that's going to happen starting next Sunday is, is all in there for you. Anything else I'm missing this morning? See no one else raising their hand or jumping to their feet urgently. I'll assume that we've got everything covered in terms of our concerns this morning. Let us then begin with our call to worship. Praise the Lord. Happy are those who fear the Lord, who greatly delight in his commandments. Their descendants will be mighty in the land. The generation of the upright will be blessed. Wealth and riches are in their houses, and their righteousness endures forever. They rise in the darkness as the light for the upright. They are gracious, merciful, and righteous. Please stand. 
understand as you are able in body or in spirit as we sing our own hymn. Those on him, 
So those of you that were here the last time that I was here to lead worship, um, I want to clarify something. Um, some people thought when I said that I hadn't preached to them from a pulpit in 25 years, or I don't have any sermons on file, kind of thought that that means I haven't done any preaching for a long time. And that's not true. Um, unfortunately for me, most of the preaching that I did in the last 25 years or 26 years were at funerals in my role as the administrative chaplain of Penn Medicine's hospice program. But the other thing is that in 1983, I was called to a church that had what was known in, or often referred to as a flex space. Anybody ever been in a church that has a flex space? So instead of pews, we had movable chairs. Nice cushion, wooden movable chairs. We had a table altar made of wood that could be moved. Our baptismal cloth could be moved. As a matter of fact, on some Sunday mornings when we had a baptism, we would put the chairs around the baptismal font with the baptismal font in the middle so that it was the focus of the service that day. And instead of having a pulpit in a stationary place like that, we had what was referred to liturgically as an ambo. Say that with me now, ambo. See, you learned something new today, okay? If you learned anything, anything else, you learned something new today. All right? A reading table, and it can be moved anywhere. It usually set up to the left of the altar. But as time went on, as we changed the space so many times, I got to the point where I stopped using it. And I actually achieved my goal, which was to finally be able to do a sermon without a manuscript. But that's a story for another day. I wanted you to be able to look up that reading from Hebrews, because that's where I'm going to focus this morning. especially on the verse that to be with prison as though you were in prison with them. Actually, I picked that lesson because that jumped right out at me because I spent over 10 years in the 1980s and early 1990s leading a Bible study group at the old State Correctional Institute at Greaterford with a group of lifers every other Thursday evening. And so I had some idea of what it was like to be with those who were in prison. And if, as some scholars believe, this letter was written excuse me, by Paul, then it's very likely that Paul also understood that from what we know of his life. But I think that verse is really leading us to a broader understanding of what the writer is trying to tell us today. I don't think the writer is just focused on being with those who are in prison. I think the writer is really trying to focus us on the idea that just as Jesus did, we are called by God to be with those who are, in, who are suffering or in need. That means dealing more than just saying, I'm a Christian. It means being a Christian. Do I need to repeat that for you? It means more than saying, I'm a Christian. It means being a Christian. Anybody here ever sent somebody a sympathy card? Well, there's a hazard group there. <laughs> I can't hear the round of your heads. What it was it usually said? Sorry for your loss. May God be with you. And also with you. <laughs> but let me ask you 
you another question. Have you ever sent anybody in empathy? If you haven't, you're probably right. Because I've never found an empathy card. Because an empathy card means sending ourselves. Do you know the difference between the word sympathy and empathy? No English scholars in here? Well, good, because I'm not either. But sympathy literally means to feel sorry for someone. Empathy means feeling sorry for someone and wanting to do something to make it better. That's why it's hard to send an empathy card. Because an empathy card means that we have to be a part of it. It means that we want to be a part of the solution. We want to be partners with them. A few weeks ago, I remember Pastor Leslie preaching a sermon on the story of the Samaritan. Any of you remember that? You notice I call it the story of the Samaritan. And if you remember Pastor Leslie's sermon, she took us through each of the characters in the story. You remember that? And they each had a good reason why they didn't help this person. And so I think it's somewhat judgmental to call the Samaritan good because that then implies that the other people are what? Bad. Good, hey, we got a response, thanks. <laughs> You're into that, right, good and bad? I'm sorry. If we read the story carefully enough, the story said the Samaritan was what? You remember? The Samaritan was mercy. The Samaritan did what the Samaritan did for the person along the road because the Samaritan had mercy for them. That's empathy. That's empathy. Not sympathy. <clears throat> That's empathy. Some people look at me funny. But that's normal for me. <laughs> Some people look at me funny when I say that Jesus for me often appears to be the hesitant or reluctant But if you read all of the miracle stories in the Bible, there's a reason why you can come to that conclusion. And it's primarily because of the fact that Jesus did not want to be the next faith healer on the street. He came to suffer and die on the cross and save the world from sin. The last thing he wanted to do was get caught up in this whirlwind of people looking for someone who could heal them. But if you read each of those stories very carefully, you find out why Jesus couldn't just walk away. Why Jesus couldn't just pass them by. 
Sometimes go back and read most of the healing stories of Jesus and you'll find a phrase in there that says something like this. But he had compassion for them. You want to know a, a synonym for the word compassion? Empathy. And by the way, I did look that up. <laughs> he could not walk away because he had compassion for them. He was empathetic. He needed to do something. We are called to be the church in the world today. We are called to be a servant church. And that means serving the needs of others. And not just worrying about ourselves. When we stopped by on Friday evening to pick up, when I stopped by to pick up the worship information on Friday evening, Tony was here. And he said, you know, the opening hymn's going to go real well with your sermon today. And I said to him, well, I didn't even know what the opening hymn was going to be, but I was going to talk about it anyway. It's a shame that Pastor Leslie isn't here today because if you remember, a few weeks ago she told us what? They were serving one of her favorite hymns. But I like this hymn because it's a hymn of action. It reminds us what we as the people of God and as the church are called to be. Because the word love in here is not a verb. It's a noun. A noun of action. It's kind of funny. Yesterday, my my inspiring quote of the day was from Mr. Rogers. And guess what he said to me? Love is an action. Love is an action. Whether it's being with people who are in prison or with the homeless on the street, or the sick and the dying, with our neighbor who's struggling with family issues, or someone who's in financial distress, we are called to be a Christian. We are called to be the church. Reaching out in love and sharing the message of God's love that we have experienced in Jesus Christ with others. So my message to you is simply this. Go in peace. Serve the Lord.
Merle? Merle. Merle. And the other one, which is on the sky? Yes, so far we have the simple eating family, Tony's mom, his sister Donna, Susan, the homeless, Merle, and Scott. Other others. What a joy I had my birthday on the 15th. Your birthday on the 15th. I was going to share our joy today also, and that's the fact that this past week I celebrated the 44th anniversary of my ordination. Now, I don't add up the years, I'm old. <laughs> Anything else this morning? If not, then let us turn to God the word of prayer. God, you have blessed us with your love. As you sent your son Jesus into the world to suffer and die on the cross that we might have life and have it abundant. Lord, help us to be a blessing to others as we reach out in the world in service. As we show empathy for those around us. Lord, we pray especially for people who are in more torn areas, for people in places of natural disaster, especially in these days when the heat is so high outside. We pray for those who have no place to go to be cool. We pray especially in the areas that are affected by droughts, where there is little or no water. Lord, we pray for the sick, for the dying, for all who are struggling with any kind of mental illness, for those struggling with issues of addiction, for those feeling a sense of loss. with them, Lord. Surround them with your arms of mercy. Help them to know your peace. God, bless us in our journeys. Open our eyes to see the needs of the world around us and understand what it means to be empathetic, compassionate, merciful, Now, Lord, we pray for those we name now, either silently or on our lips, in this moment. Lord, lead us and guide us in your peace and your love. Pray the words that Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, 
as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the life is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever.